Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of The H Panel, the show where I bring on guests from all different backgrounds to talk all the things mental health. I am your host, Harry Potvin, and today I'm joined by Michelle Wolf. Michelle is a health coach, the host of the Move Forward podcast, and is also the founder of the Move Collective, which is a community that provides health and wellness resources, positive energy, and inspiration to help clients in their self-improvement journeys. Michelle was so fun to talk to, and I wanted to thank her again for coming on and having this discussion with me. Before you guys keep going, please like, comment, share, subscribe, give five stars on podcast platforms, share with someone who might need to hear this episode. It's a really great one, and I can't wait for you guys to listen. I hope you all have a great day. I'll talk to you soon. Peace. I'm Harry Potvin, and this is The H Panel. Michelle, thank you so much for joining me today. Not a problem here. I'm so excited to to chat with you and to share some knowledge. Awesome. Yeah. So before we get too into it, I wanted to get to know you a little better. So what kind of started you on this health and wellness journey? Yeah. So we could go back from the beginning or we could kind of go in between. I feel like there's been many steps along the way, but I'd say the main reason of why I am so passionate about health and wellness is because when I was eight years old, my mom passed away from cancer. And I always had it in my head that like, if I knew more, maybe I could save her. So I just researched and I was just really interested in like trying to figure out why, you know, she wasn't that unhealthy. We ate pretty good. Um, and, And then along the way I had different digestive issues. Um, and eczema and I'd get cold sores and you know one thing after the next I I used to drink a lot when I was in high school and that obviously caused a lot of stress on my body as well Um, and so you know what I just I became really interested in trying to figure it out and then if somebody was ill or somebody had an illness or um, somebody had something going on I'd be really curious at why where did this come from I know doctors are really the type of people who or that what they do is they mask it they're going to give you something for the the symptoms you have but it doesn't necessarily um, make sense why you've gotten that illness or disease so in my head i'm all about trying to figure out where that comes from why we get these things and you know maybe if we don't even figure out exactly why maybe we could prevent it even just a little bit or prevent our, our, our body from creating new illnesses. So yeah, I think um, the biggest thing would be that just losing my mom and uh, not wanting to have that happen for myself. And uh, I'm 35 now. She was 35 at the time when she passed. I was eight years old. And um, yeah, it's just, it's been my life journey to bring in as much health and wellness into my body and, uh, and to share it with the world. Awesome. Yeah. So when you say you guys ate fairly well, what would be like a typical diet for you guys? So I was a farm girl, grew, born and raised on the farm. Um, Same with my mom and dad, born and raised on the farm. So, you know, as much as possible, we ate from our garden and our livestock Um, but really it was like the meat and potato and veggies, very simple, very, um, just, yeah, just your, your breads. Um, and you know, as it evolved and as I, I did get, um, I, you know, I think they're busy, they were busy and it wasn't so much, um, as healthy as maybe what they were brought up on. I think we transitioned to like some boxed foods and some canned foods and, things like that. We didn't eat a lot of sweets. We weren't the type to have a lot of pop. Um, You know, we had pizza out once a week and that was our one thing that we would go out and get um, from outside of the house. Otherwise we prepared our own foods. And so in general, it seemed healthy. Um, Looking at my diet now and how I eat now, it was nowhere compared to that. You know, we weren't eating kale or bok choy or you know, we'd have a couple pieces of broccoli maybe and you'd you'd be good for the day. But um, so it seemed good at the time. Um, But uh, I and I think it's much better than a lot of people these days. A lot of a lot of people these days are eating like, 
you know, they go out almost every night and have fast food and uh, boxed foods that are filled with toxins. So in my opinion, we, we ate a lot better than what a lot of people eat now. Um, but my, my diet has definitely transitioned to even much more healthier as I've gotten older. And, and I really understand it now. Yeah, I was just going to say, because that diet you just listed sounds a lot better than some of the people I've seen eat. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, you know, it's, it's easy, it's convenient. It's, um, it's what we're taught in the media is to just, you know, it's, it's all over the place. You know, you, you want something, you see it, you crave it, you go for it. Um, in the, in, in the country where I'm brought up, you know, we don't have a McDonald's other than like 30 minutes away, you know, you have to, you have to drive to get there. Um, and so I, I think for certain areas, it's not as easy, but you can go to the grocery store and you can buy your pre-made, you know, chicken fingers and fries and all this stuff that is, is, is not really very good for us. It's, it's consumes a lot of unhealthy, toxic, um, uh, things that are causing havoc on our body. And we just, we can't see it. We don't know it. We can't see it. Our bodies are quite resilient. So, you know, for the majority of us, we're okay. But over time, it can really create some serious illnesses that um, that you might not everybody really puts together as it being the food and the things that we're putting in and, and ingesting in our bodies. Yeah. So now that you've kind of learned your ways, what what are some of the like meals that you would prepare now compared to back then? Yeah. So I I actually am obsessed with salads. Like I love. I love a good salad, like a big, huge honkin salad. And I'm talking like, you're going to put like a whole bunch of different vegetables in there. Um, I love having like a nice hearty protein. So like eggs, even fish. I've actually, I'm starting to dabble into fish. I actually haven't told anybody that yet, but I've been a vegetarian for so long. Um, but dabbling into a little bit of fish there. But you know what? My, my breakfasts include a massive, huge glass of greens. I take um, like a supplement um, that is just packed with greens from all over the world, certain, you know, um, antioxidants and prebiotics, probiotics, things that are going to boost up my immune system. Um, so I take a big glass of that. For breakfast, I'm going to have a bowl of like chia seeds and flax seeds and hemp seeds and um, coconut milk and things that are from the earth, things that are whole, things that are supporting my hormones, that are supporting my digestive system. Um, lunchtime, like I said, I'm going to have a big, huge, massive salad, um, typically with a bunch of eggs on top, uh, maybe some seeds. And then uh, dinner, it's like a stir fry, typically. Um, stir fry, maybe some tacos, but like my tacos are like a whole bunch of vegetables and, um, you know, chickpeas or lentils or, you know, it's just everything that I eat is filled with so much nutrients because the whole point to eating is to give your body nutrients so it can thrive, so it can survive, so that it can, um, you know, do what it's, its function is, is to live and to be and to give me energy. And if I feed it things that are from a box, I know that I'm not going to have energy. I know that I'm going to be pissed and angry and have a bad attitude later because these things are not helping my brain and my mind. Um, yeah. So just anything and everything that is like filled with nutrients, I'm all about it. Yeah. You, you, um, th we kind of blur that line between, you know, eating as pleasure and then eating as like to help new give your body nutrients. I feel like we often forget that that's how we get our energy is from our food. Like we're taught in school, you know, the plants grow better in the, like the soil with more nutrients or the animals, you know, give better meat if they're fed different diets. But then we talk about us and we forget about that, which is why we like resort to like McDonald's and Taco Bell. We're like, we just, I want to feel good eating. It's like a short term, good feeling. And, and you know what? I'm not judging anyone because these foods are actually made and created to trick your brain to thinking that it is good for you. You actually want it and crave it. Um, as well as our gut, our gut has like this second brain they talk about. 
And it has certain things in it that once you feed it this bacteria and this um, and, and these certain things, your body wants more of that. It is literally begging you for more of that. And if you don't have it, you go in a withdrawal. It's very much like any drug, any addiction. And so I don't fault anyone for that. You know, even myself over the holidays, I, you know, indulge a little bit extra. Yeah. You're rolling your eyes. I love, you know, we indulge a little extra and then the next few weeks, if not even months, we are kicking ourselves in the pants because all we want is that sugar. All we want is that extra meal that, you know, it's, it's, it's like our body just like needs it because we're used to having it. And so I don't fault anyone for that. It's, it, it really is. Um, it's a lot of work to, to get yourself out of that, but you can, when you think of it like that, like, I'm like, I just want to have as much energy as possible. I want to wake up and I want to feel good. I want to have a really good sleep. The clients I talk to, oh my gosh, like they, that's one of the first things they say. They're like, I didn't even realize that I was having a bad sleep. But now that I've had like full night sleeps, three nights in a row, I had no idea that my food and my water and my exercise actually could affect my sleep. It's like, well, yeah, like, of course. <laughs> so, so, you know, I, I'm all about looking at, you're looking at your day to day and what are things going on with your body? Like, do you have an ache or a pain in your body or do you have lack of sleep or do you have anger issues or do you have loss of control of your emotions? And it's like, if you, or even like itchy skin or zits or, you know, something like this, if you have something going on in your body, there's likely something you can do to help it and to improve it. Um, and it all starts with your diet, um, yeah, what you're putting in your body. So, uh, yeah, I'm just, I'm so passionate about it. I'm so excited about it. <laughs> That's awesome. It, it's one of those things that like, you know, it seems simple enough to understand, like you, you feed yourself good things, you feel good, but most of us don't like understand it or like we know it, we just ignore it. Like I, I, I can't judge people either. I stuff my face with McDonald's chicken burgers. Like I'm obsessed and then I'll be like, oh, I feel so gross. And then I'll do it again. So how, how do we stop that dangerous cycle? Like, how do you, how does one start putting an end to that? So I love this because, um, not a lot of people care enough or understand how good it feels to eat well. And so to have somebody like myself, I'm an accountability coach. So you come to me and I go through all of your health and wellness, and I'm going to like give you a program and keep, just keep you accountable more so. It's like completely different for every single person because we all have our own things. Um, so something like that, if you have somebody to keep you accountable, for myself, it took me years. It took me a really long time. Even though I knew I wanted to be healthy and I was educated, I still went through a long time, a long period of eating really crappy, hiding it. Not a lot of people knew that I was overeating, but like, man, I could eat a box of cereal uh, um, in a day. I could have like um, Nutri-Grain bars. You give me a box of it, they'll be gone in the day. You know, like I am the, t give me three chocolate bars. Sure, I'll eat them all. Pa a pack of cookies, no problem. It was like, you know, as soon as I was alone, it was like, I would just keep eating and eating and eating and over consume. So for myself, it took me a really long time. I'd be really good for a little while and then I'd fall off the rail again. And so I get it. I get that. I get that feeling of just like wanting to do good, but not quite understanding how important it is for ourselves. And so it's a lot of mindset stuff. Like you really got to work at it. You got to choose and decide why you're doing this. Um, whether you have children and it's like, you want to be your best self for your children, or maybe you want children in your future. And you think about like, geez, I don't want my children to have this toxic crap in their body. And if it's in my body, they're going to get it. Um, and also for me, mine was, you know, my mom died at 35 and now I'm at 35 and I'm like, I am way healthier than I was when I was 19. So for me, my drive is staying alive not getting cancer, not, um, not ending up the same way that my mom did. And, and I don't, who knows if it was food, you know, again, we don't know for sure what it is, but I'm going to do everything possible in my life to limit the stress on my body. So, you know what, it, it's really different for everybody. If you need accountability coach or an accountability, accountability buddy, 
um, reach out to somebody. If you need a diet plan of some sort and like talk to a doctor, you go that route. It's just, don't give up. Like don't stop and really pay attention to what is your why. I want to be really successful. I want to have a lot of money. I want to be a businesswoman. And in order to do that, I need to have a lot of energy as well, right? I don't wait, want to wake up the next day after drinking 12 beers and then feeling like crap and sleeping my hangover off all day, you know? like. I'm over that. I don't want that for my life. So I have a plan. I have a vision. I know what I want and I go for it. I haven't yep. touched, I haven't touched beer in like a year and a half for that exact reason. <laughs> okay. So you were sick and tired of waking up and feeling like garbage. Okay. My, for the last time I had beer, it's a long story, but like I drank everyone under the table. Like, I, like the bartender was like, can you relax? Cause it was just way too much beer. And then I woke up the next morning, not only did my gut feel terrible, my throat was swollen and I just slept it off the whole day. I was like, I just wasted a whole day doing mm -hmm. absolutely nothing because I overdrank. Oh yeah. It's, you know what? I've heard so many people um, getting away from alcohol these days. And I'm not saying that you can't drink alcohol or that it's not good. Like, I think it's okay every once in a while. And I'm not saying I'll never drink again. But I've just had way too many times where I felt like garbage and it's, it, that's not, that's not what I want in my life anymore. I don't want, you know, I want to have a good time, but I can have a good time without alcohol. So mm -hmm. yeah, there's just, it, there's just so much more to life than feeling like garbage after having that high, you know, you say that and then people go, look at that nerd. <laughs> like, I don't want, I don't want to drink anymore. They're like, Oh, who are you? Oh, I went through that. You know what? I left my town mostly because of, because of feeling that possible judgment of just like, you know what? I just don't need to be around that anymore. And uh, yeah, it's just, you really got to have a backbone. You really got to make the decision and decide. A lot of my clients say how tricky that is, like how hard it is to, um, to be able to stand up to those people who are going to tell them like, oh, come on, just have one. It's so much fun. Like, let's do it. Don't be the baby. Come on. You know, you want it, you know, it's peer pressure. And, you know, I, I, I can't say I used to do it to other people, but like, I felt it when somebody would say, I'd be like, oh, I know I want it fine. I'll have it, you know? So you really got to make a choice and just go for it. Yeah. And I, I was the same way on the other end where someone would be like, I don't drink. I'd be like, you freaking loser. Like I was, I was that guy too. Yep. Yep. So you can't fault them, right? Like you get it. They want to have a good time and they don't want to be left alone. They want, they want you to join in with them. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that, that voice that's telling you like, come on, just one more. Like that's you. Sometimes it's your own voice saying that. Totally. Totally. Cause it is good. It feels good. It tastes good. Like it's like a good time, but not the after party. No. <laughs> and like now, like they're, they're, they're finding like, not maybe alcoholism as well, but like substance abuse cases have increased because we're in our houses and we have nothing to do. And maybe, you know, the drink on the counter seems pretty, you know, appealing because there's nothing else to do. So how, how do we get rid of that little, there's nothing else to do. So I might as well drink now because I feel like a lot of people are going through that. Like you're seeing not just substance abuse, take that aside, but like, um, like obesity rates have slowly become higher and higher because you know we're locked at home i've done this i still do it we eat all day non-stop and we don't move because there's nowhere to go so how do we stop that yeah you know what it's it's all about deciding it's all about action it's all about just making a choice that that's not how you want to live so for myself i am very intentional that like every single day i move my body every single day my limit is my, or my, my, um, yeah, my, my limit. How would you say that? My minimum mm. is an hour a day. I tell my clients 30 minutes just because that's like a, a good basis to start at. So like, I don't care if you're, if you're going for a walk, I don't care if you're wrestling with your kids. I don't care if you are, um, getting freaky in the sheets. I don't care what it is. You got 30 minutes a day at least that you're gonna move your body. So that is one thing that I just like, it's a non-negotiable. Um, when it comes to alcohol, now, if you enjoy it, you're not gonna change. No matter what I say and tell you, you're not gonna change. 
But if you have an inkling or if you have an idea that you do want to shift some things about eating better and, and, and maybe not drinking, maybe not smoking, whatever your addiction is, um, my thing is, is just surround yourself with people who are more like what you want to be like, more like what you want to thrive to be like. So people who don't drink, people who don't smoke, um, people who do eat healthy. And if those people aren't around you and like we're in a pandemic and a lockdown or whichever, um, you're going to surround yourself with those people online, YouTube. Um, I used to put Tony Robbins on all the time in the morning when I would get ready for work. Um, and then a podcast, I would put a podcast in my ear when I'm going for that walk. And it's about health and wellness. It's about people who are thriving for like success and, um, and having those people in your life, not necessarily people that you're best friends with that you're talking to, but you're reading their books, you're listening to the podcast, they're in your ear. That is going to shift your mindset to thinking that that's the way that you want to be and thinking that that's how you do it. And then slowly in time, you will start to see some shifts and transitions. If you, if you don't want to drink anymore, you just got to make the decision. I'm not going to drink anymore. You know, give yourself some time and see how you feel. Pay attention to how good it feels. Um, same with eating. It's like, it's up to you to make that choice. You really, you really have to make that choice, whether you need somebody to help you like myself or whether you just go cold turkey or whatever it is. It's like, you really got to make a choice. You got to tell yourself what's happening and don't put up with the bullshit anymore. Like there's, there's, you can easily make excuses. Anybody can make excuses. But if you actually make the decision and you go for it, how good are you going to feel? How amazing will you feel? How proud will you be? How like successful will you be? That's what I, I, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of um, business women, a lot of people who are aiming and thriving and men. Sorry, I shouldn't just say women. I just, you oh, know, how dare you? Are, <laughs> no, a lot of women are more attracted to the whole coaching scene with a woman, but I mean, I would love to kick a guy in his pants and tell him, you know, what to do too. So, um, I do have a couple of males, but anyways, so, um, if you, yeah, if you need that, I say, say, get the help, but otherwise it's like, it, it's all about your mindset. You really, you need to make a choice, quit making excuses and, put one step forward in front of the other little, little transitions go a really long way. So like telling yourself to drink more water is going to help you not maybe eat as much food. Um, telling yourself to move your body for 30 minutes a day is going to amp you up and get you excited and be like, nah, I don't need that extra bag of chips because I feel on a high, you know, like I feel really good after that walk and I'm like power to do some more maybe. So it's, it's amazing how even just a little few little shifts can really start shifting your, your day to day. And then you add in more things as you go. So yeah, start small, start small and, uh, and add it in for sure. Yeah. The whole, it starts with you is so important, right? Because even like when you're talking to someone about, uh, when people ask you like, how should I, uh, take care of my friend with, you know, depression or like they're, they're in a really low spot. How do I help? Like the obvious answer that most of us don't want to accept is to just listen and whatever they want to do, they have, they have to do it. You can't tell them what to do. Oh yeah. And that goes with all sorts of addictions or all sorts of mental issues. Like you really can't tell them what to do. You have to let them know you're there, listen, uh, support them in the best way possible. But, but yeah, no, you can't, you know what, unfortunately people are going to make up their own decision and their own choices. And you just need to be there to support them as much as you can. Mm -hmm. Yeah. hundred percent. And then on the, on the whole topic of goal setting, um, what, what's your best advice for people on goal setting? Because I struggle with this as well. Uh, I'm a big time culprit of this, but I'll like set a goal in motion, but the goal is so unobtainable without like years of hard work. Like I'll, I'll set a goal where I'm like, yeah, I want to look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Like I want, I want his six pack. I want his pecs, but without acknowledging like the decades that he spent on his body, <laughs> Um, so how, how do you, Roy, come on, let's be real. Okay. Yeah, sure. <laughs> He's not going to watch this. Um, on the rides. no, he knows that he talks about it. Does he? Oh yeah. Openly. Yep. Oh, okay. Well then that too, like how, how do you go about setting realistic goals? Okay. I love this one. So 
I love realistic goals and unrealistic goals. I do think both are healthy. The reason why is I really think it's cool and important to thrive, to be your best, to, to be beyond what you could ever be. Like go way beyond and you will be shocked at what comes your way. However, it's the action which is going to get there. You can sit here all day, manifest, journal, visualize, have your vision board, do all the things, but if you don't take that action towards those goals, you, you're just staring at random useless things that are never going to be achieved. So for me, it is knowing my goal, being specific with what my goal is as much as possible. You may not know the end thing that you want, but you know maybe an idea. So like for you, Arnold, you would like to be more fit, right? Right? That, that you could say that that's fair, that that's part of it. All right. So do you, t do you think about that every single day? About Arnold? No, that was just a random selection, but the six pack and abs. Yeah. You do think about the six pack and abs every day. Okay. okay. Awesome. So that's the first thing. It's like having the visualization and not just like, I want it, but like, I'm going to have it. Mm. Tell yourself you're going to have it. So if it's a goal, I'm going to have that. That is mine. So if you already see it as yours, it's already been achieved. So it's only up to you now to create it. You can create that. Everybody can have some six pack if they, if they want to have it. So then on top of that, if you don't do something every single day in order to get that, you're not going to achieve your goal. It's again, it's just some random thing, useless, random thing that you've thought of and you've given up on. So in my opinion, you need to think what is one thing every day that I can do to achieve that goal. Now, if you want to achieve that goal in six months, your goal, your, your action plan is going to be very different from if you say, I'm going to give myself three years, it's going to be very different because you can draw it out a little bit more. But like, if you give yourself six months to get those abs, then you're going to do everything possible in order to get it. You're going to hire a coach, somebody like me, because I could, I could, I could 1000% get you to that point. Mm. You're going to do your research. You're going to have that information in your ear, like podcasts and read books and um, do the things that people tell you to do. So you're going to um, eat better. You're going to make better choices. You're going to get your sleep. You're going to, you know, all those steps along the way are going to get you to that point. But if you don't do the action, the goal will never be achieved. Yeah. And then how do you co combat those voices? Like, let's say you're, because it takes what, like 16 days straight to create a habit or something. I might have that number wrong. I think it's even closer to 30. Yeah. I don't know. I've, I've heard multiple different ones, but yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's pro 30 makes more sense, but l let's say you're on day like 18 and your voice goes, you know, just take today off. You need it. Like, how do you combat that? You know, I think it's okay to take a day off as long as the next day or even like an hour off or like a meal off, but then beyond that you continue. Um, it, again, it's the mindset. It all, it all comes back to the mindset. Like if you really want that goal, there's no excuses. You just aim for it. So, so to combat that, it's just believing it's yours. Like tell yourself it's yours. It's not, it's not like made up or it's not, um, something that's, that's not going to be achieved. It's something that has achieved. It's something that is yours already. And, uh, yeah, you know what? It's it's a tricky one. It's different for everybody. It's just you got to make a choice, and then and then your mind and your like if you if you sit here right now and I tell you like maybe you could have abs, you know maybe maybe someday you could. Mm. It's possible. Or if I told you like I I can get you those abs. You know you deserve those abs. Those abs are yours. You have abs. Like how do you feel? What's the difference between A and B? Uh, B. I'm ready to go on the treadmill right now. See what I mean? So if you have like a quote that's in front of you that you have every single day that you read it as soon as you wake up, or if you have like, okay, in the morning, I listen to like what I did, Tony Robbins, or if you have, if you even record yourself, like I am amazing. I am awesome. I have abs. Like you, you literally record yourself and you play it every day. It'll get you in that amped, excited, like motivating motion to want to achieve those goals. So you're going to go do that workout. You're going to hit that workout and, and feel really good about it. So, you know, it's different for everybody. 
we all have a thing that will like drive us. Um, I do meditation and journaling first thing in the morning. Um, so that really sets my mind up properly, but, and then I have quotes and things that I read. So, so there's, there's different things you can do, but it's, it's all about setting that mindset and, and just really choosing that. Like, this is the, this is the end result. There's no excuses. Mm -hmm. I think, I think a, a big problem with like, even people my age is, um, with, you know, social media and the internet, like everything's so accessible and it's so quick. So you're, you're, you're expecting quick results. Like yeah. right away, you're like, I'm eating well, why have I not lost weight in three days? And like yeah. that, that gets you discouraged because you're looking on social media and these people are like, not even just six packs, let's get that out of the way. But like people who are like super successful or like so many followers, so many likes, which in the grand scheme of things means absolutely nothing. But like you see that and you get discouraged and then you start beating yourself up because you're not that person. How do you stop that? Yeah, you know what? Eliminate, <laughs> eliminating whatever triggers you, I think is really important. But again, coming back to surrounding yourself with like, what does feel good? What does drive you? What does excite you? Um, like we did with the A and the B, like the B gets you excited and ready and amped. If you watch social media and that brings you down and that actually makes you think like, oh, I'm not good enough. Like I'm not as good as them. Why aren't you as good as them? Mm -hmm. Why can't you achieve that? Just because you don't have it right now doesn't mean that you can't achieve that. Listen, I, it took me a long time to get to my health and wellness where I felt good, where I didn't like think like, oh my God, like I got rolls coming out of my pants. My digestive system is so slow that I feel like a bag of crap. Um, I have cold sores all the time or eczema and like just, you know, it took me a really long time to really understand that but I didn't give up. I kept going. And now because I do these things every single day, it is consistent. And like, I feel amazing. So consistency, taking action, and don't put up with the bullshit in your head. Mm. You, you, your mind, your mind is so powerful. And, and when you give into it, when you listen to that little devil inside telling you that you're not good enough, because if somebody told you that when you were younger, your parents taught you that or what, whoever it was who told you were not good, you were not good enough, you are, you are to fault. You are feeding into that. You are listening to that devil inside your mind. You got to stop listening. You know, you just, you just do, even if it's for a second, they're there. Nope. They're gone. Kick them out the door. Like it's, it's, it really is discipline. It really is constant work and it's not going to shift overnight. Like I, I do not think that this kind of stuff does just shift overnight. I do think it's a process, but it's like consistency. It's like constantly listening to people who've done it. People like myself, like re-listen to this episode and think like, shit, if she's done it, I can do it. You know, like really surround yourself with that. Stop watching media that doesn't make you feel good. Mm -hmm. Watch media that feels really good and amplifies you and excites you. You know, Gary V, put him in your ear. He's, he's, a, he's got that tough love. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I do really like Gary V. I, I, I was kind of, uh, he kind of rubbed me the wrong way when I first saw him on my social media. I was like, who the fuck is this guy? But like, he, he, he I love that tough love stuff. Yeah, it can be good. It has a place. I can't say I listen to him all the time. Um, but he's he's a firecracker. He gets stuff done because he doesn't put up with crap. He he makes a decision and he goes for it. And I just think I just think that we've become this society where we go for the easiest route. The easiest route is comfortable, it's safe, but it's also really not healthy and not always good for us. Maybe we need to jump outside of that comfort zone, do something really uncomfortable and aim for and thrive to be better humans because isn't that what we all truly want anyways? Yeah, to deep down. Better? Yeah, to become better, for sure. We would all love to be, you know, making lots of money, have freedom from in that retrospect, financially freedom, feel good about ourselves inside and out. Um, and, and, and you know what, maybe this is tough love. Maybe people are hearing this and they're like, yeah, but it's just not that easy. And that's fine. Like maybe you need some other form to get you there, but 
man, if you, if you consume healthy foods, if you get enough water, if you get enough sleep, if you get your movement, if you work on your mindset and you protect like your mind and, and, and your, um, your mindset, honestly, like working out that every day, it adds up and creates a better version of yourself. And then, and then when this tough stuff comes along, um, it's, it's easier to handle, you know, I know even through all of this, it's, it hasn't been all rainbows and sunshine for me either, even though I work at this all the time. However, I will say that like, you know, I'll have a morning or an afternoon where I'm like, oh, like, is this the same day as it was yesterday? Like lockdown, can't do anything different. This is so boring. I'm so annoyed. You know, like I'll have a moment, but because I do the work, I get out of it that much faster. And then I'm on a high and I'm, you know, dancing and prancing around like normal with all my energy. So this, this work really is valuable and really does work. And it all, like, I truly believe it. a lot of it starts with, with what we consume and what we put into our bodies. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. It's easy to go down that rabbit hole where you wake up and you go, Oh, I can't do anything again. Oh. And then you just get stuck in this loop where you're like, I'm just going to lie here and I'm not going to do anything about it. Like, cause I, I'm not even making fun of anybody. I, I've done that. I did that for like how, like the first couple months of the lockdown, I did that. And then like even a couple weeks ago, I did that. I, every morning I woke up, I was like, oh, like I can't do anything. I can't go see my friends. I can't like, what was I even doing anyway? But like, it's just, you get stuck in that, in that loop. And I think we, that little devil you're talking about in your head, I feel like we give into that way too easy. We give it way too much power. Like it's like listening to a conspiracy theorist who has no scientific evidence or no basis. You just, it doesn't matter what it says. You go, yeah, that's true. You just buy into it and you believe it yeah. so quickly. Oh, it's so dangerous. It's so dangerous. And we all have it. Every single one of us have it. And it's, it's like, you really got to fight it. You really got to make a decision that like every time that little devil comes up, what can you do to not listen? Like, what is it that you can do to not listen to that? And, um, and you, and you just have to make a choice to do that. And like, I don't fault you. Like, I totally get it. You laying on the couch and, and, and just chilling out like, God, it's so easy, right? It's so easy. And why not? However, if you had the choice to like have so much energy and feel powerful and like have that amazing bod, wouldn't you choose that? Right? It's just, it takes work to get there. It really does. It takes you the work to get there. But like when you do the work, man, you're going to feel good. Mm -hmm. And I know that because I've been there. <laughs> you know? Yeah. 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 I, I've, I think also what a lot of athletes struggle with when they retire, because I did varsity swimming for like 11 years is, ah. yeah, is like, and I'm sure, you know, you said you played sports, right? I used to be a swimmer too. Yeah. But I, yeah, figure skate, hockey, ring it, basketball, you name it. I've done it, but swimming was a big one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you, you get it like swimming, you know, we would in university, we'd go like eight times a week minimum. It was like uh, just cardio on cardio and cardio and you could eat whatever you wanted because it didn't matter. You just burned that bad boy off and then you retire and your appetite is still there. But you go, I don't yeah. want to work out as hard as I did before to lose that weight because as an athlete, you believe you're convinced that even after you're done, you have to in order to stay fit, in order to work out, you have to work out like three hours a day, super intense, like when in reality, like you've mentioned before, an hour of movement a day and watching what you eat can go a long way. So I think there's also that big misconception. Totally. And you know, through the pandemic, so I used to do a lot of like HIIT workouts um, prior to the pandemic. It felt good for me to do a lot of cardio and a lot of HIIT workouts. I really, I really like that. And with somebody who has slow digestion, I do find it beneficial for me to like go hard at times um get things fired up but through the pandemic and when we're when our nervous system is already on overdrive 
it's not healthy for us to go hard every day. So for me, I made a huge shift. I transitioned into more of like Pilates and yoga because it was just feeling good for me. So yeah, if you, if it doesn't feel good for you to like go for the gym or go, go to the, go, go, or you can't go to the gym or go for a run or something that you think you should be doing, try something different. Like just like go and like go tobogganing, go outside and like go tobogganing and go up and down that hill 25 times. It's amazing where you can get activity in different ways that you don't even realize. It's just making that decision. Like I said, get freaky in the sheets, whatever it is, I don't care. It's just move your body for 30 to 60 minutes every day. And listen, tobogganing is no joke. <laughs> like the going up that hill back and forth, you get, you slide down and you look up, you're like, it doesn't even seem that far, but then you slip the entire way up and you burn like a thousand calories just trying to get up that freaking hill. I'm telling you, my, my brother and sister were laughing at me the whole time because I was so out of breath after like two tries. I was like, man, this is, it's steep. I don't have boots on. <laughs> So put the boots on, put on some snow pants and truthfully, like go out three times a week and you will be surprised at how toned your body gets. It's like, it's just like, and, and you have fun. Like you're talking about, you guys are laughing and stuff with your siblings. Like it's so much fun. You just, you really just have to be creative, especially with right now where things are different. Um, yeah, but keep, keep moving and just figure it out. Yeah. That, that's the thing. We got to be creative. And I think overall, you know, humans are we're pretty adaptive, like in general, but it's just ch chiming into that, like locking into that adaptability. Mm -hmm. So I've, it, yeah, in, in regard to like energy levels, I've found that like, mm -hmm. you know, recently I've been struggling with that a lot. Like I've been having a really tough time trying to get my energy levels up because, you know, I, 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 live with depression and anxiety, but for some reason, cause I've gone through my own journey and I like have the solutions and the tips and tricks for some reason, the last couple of weeks have been terrible. And I, I don't know why, and I'm trying to figure it out. I know a lot of it's from my hours on the phone, which if you haven't checked your, uh, like the, the hour counter for how much you're on your phone, you should, because I looked at that. I was like, Oh, <laughs> what my whole day is gone but so are there any specific meals or foods or like even mantras like things you tell yourself are there specific things that you should try and do to get those energy levels up like during right now totally do you mind if i ask you a couple questions we won't get too crazy in depth yeah okay okay so this is what i do with clients so and and i am no doctor so if there is someone out there who has some sort of mental um, illness, please talk to your doctor and, 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 and figure things out with them as well, if that's necessary. However, on my end of what I like to talk with my clients about are a few basic things, and, and this drastically will change your energy. So water, how much water do you get? I see that you're drinking some there, but do you drink... Would you say you drink enough water in a day? I drink like four of these. So I don't. It's, four of those? Okay. It's pretty tall, I guess. It's pretty tall. Yeah. Yeah. And we, I mean, maybe you could get in one more there, but like four, four's decent. I would, I would say maybe add another one. Okay. How about um, sleep? How is your sleep? I've, I've notoriously been a terrible sleeper. Like I, even as an okay. athlete. Okay. So there's things that I would look at there. So there's multiple things that it could be, maybe a deficiency, maybe you're having too much screen time at night, maybe you're not getting enough activity, maybe you're not getting enough daylight. There's multiple things that I would go through and talk to somebody about that. But all those things I've listed could potentially be causes of that. Um, magnesium, lack of magnesium, multiple different things. Okay. So we could totally talk about that later, but that is, that's where I would go with on that. Food. How is your eating? I mean, I eat a lot. I eat a lot. Um, I mean, so my dinners are pretty good. Like last night I made like salmon with asparagus and rice and potatoes. 
Uh, my dinners are usually really good. My breakfasts are usually fine. And then lunch is where I lose it. I just snack. Like, I don't even have full lunch. It's just, if there's a snack in the cupboard, I'm eating it. Okay, cool. Cool. Okay, I want you to think about this. So when you consume that food, when you put those things into your body, which I'm assuming that not all of them are that healthy, um, but whenever we put food into our body, our body is actually having to work really hard to digest it. So all the energy, everything that it needs goes to our gut and tries to start breaking it down, processing it, trying to figure out where does this go to? What does that go to? What gets eliminated? All of the work is happening right then and there. For me, my smallest meal is at lunchtime. And that's just because that's when I need to be most productive. I would rather almost not eat. I'm not saying that's what you should be doing. But maybe that is something where you want to look at that. Because the more food you're consuming, the more your body is having to work really freaking hard to digest it. Um, the other thing is, is if you're eating a lot of toxic foods, your liver and your, 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 your body is also being like consumed with things that are really, really hard to digest. Um, so that is likely a big factor. So I would think about consuming as much nutrients as possible. So I don't like telling people to eliminate as much at the beginning as rather to consume more nutrients. So if you could have maybe an apple rather than that chocolate bar or that cookie, go for it. And you might be surprised at how full you get. And it might trigger you to thinking like, I don't want another grape. I don't want another apple. So I'm just not going to have anything. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, yes. Yeah, so I would say that, that, that is the basis of where I really start. Um, and then the movement, what's the movement? What is your movement like? How much activity? I mean, on a regular day, I'll go like 5,000, 10,000 steps. I mean, because swimming's done, like I'm done swimming and uh, gyms are closed. Like I, I started getting into Muay Thai. Like I, I went to a gym oh. and did it. So up until that point, like the second lockdown, I was doing pretty well. I was doing like 5,000, 10,000 steps. I would go to Muay Thai. I would do yoga. And now it's just yoga, walking for like three kilometers, three to 10 kilometers, I'd say, depending on the day. Um, but I do have a lot of days where I'm just in the house. So last week you said was like the week where you felt quite maybe like depressed or down or just like really low energy. I think that's what how you said, really low energy. Yeah. So like, yeah. what activity would you say you had last week how much during the day would there be days where you didn't get like a good 30 to an hour activity yeah okay so that you you and i both know that activity moving your body is going to boost your endorphins get you excited make you feel good it's going to help you process your, your food that you're eating. So then your digestive system is happier. It's going to help you sleep better because you need to have movement in order to have a good sleep. Really, it's all of those little things and adding them just like, even just a little bit, like tweaking just a few little things is truly going to make such a massive difference in your day. Yeah. And then in terms of like brain fog, is that the same idea? 1000% brain fog is absolutely all of those things. If you're not sleeping, you're going to have brain fog. If you're eating a lot of sugar and crappy foods, your body is consumed with it. You're going to have brain fog. Um, it's, it's, it's all of that. Even just drinking water. Like it's amazing how the water can eliminate the toxins. Um, so you need to be having enough, enough water. Now I can get into details about like you know, let's have your probiotics. Let's um, maybe do a little bit of intermittent, intermittent fasting. Um, there's a lot of other things we can get into that, but a lot of people just really need to start with the basics, drink more water, get more sleep. And there's many factors of why you're not getting sleep. So pay attention, figure it out. Don't stop until you do um, fill your body with more nutrients and move your body for 30 to 60 minutes a day. Yeah. It seems so simple. It does. And you can do it. That's the thing. You can totally do it. I, all of my clients are like, but I'm so busy. And I'm like, so you're telling me you can't drink another glass of water. You don't have time to fill that glass and drink it. Like really? <laughs> or is it just you're lazy? Like yeah. be real with me, you know?
you you can't you can't fill that up right now when you're stuck at home yeah. you can't fill it up yeah like really come on <laughs> no excuses yeah yeah we give in to the excuses too quickly it's like a safety blanket yeah it is it is so you just you really got to make a decision and go for it or hire somebody like me and i would be happy to keep you on track yeah, yeah. That, well that's my thing right and i think a lot of people are the same i like I only work out or like do things well if someone's screaming in my face. That's just from years of sports. Like the coach going, you're not good enough, work harder. I'm like, okay. And then when I'm alone, I'm like, eh, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> At least you're honest about it, right? Well, yeah. I mean, it's hard to hide, right? I, I try, I try, um, like I try to preach a lot of things, but I also like to be open about, you know, I'm not, I'm not always great. <laughs> Yeah, fair. And me neither. You know, I had a cookie this morning and it was really good. But I also had a lot of nutrients, you know, and I know the rest of my day is going to be good. So I'm okay with that. Yeah. Yeah. It's just about that's another thing is just it's about being open and honest about it, because I've done this, too. And I, I say I have I've said a, I a lot today, but um, I don't usually like talking about myself if you can't tell. But I um. But I think this is the topic that you're curious about. I am. So that's cool. like, let's teach people because everyone is likely feeling like a lot of people are feeling the way you're feeling. Yeah, I well, it's because I've for so long, I've struggled with a consistency. Like I, I'm good at starting. And I'm good at for like the first couple of weeks, I'm killer at it. You know, I've got the diet going, I've got great sleep. And then my brain, like we've said, that little voice goes, uh, you can take a break. And then that one break, which is fine, you can take breaks, but that one break sets off a chain reaction. And then I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, I can take a break again. I can take a break again. And then it's like three weeks of that. And you're like, I'm too far gone. So that's why I'm so right. interested about like, it, it's such a simple minimalist solution or like start. Maybe not the whole thing is simple, but like starting it is. And I guess I don't know, because I've I've always struggled with it so much that hearing that it's so simple, I go, huh. Yeah, you know what? I I'm listening to even like your choice of words. Like I've always struggled with it. It's always been hard for me. If I've had a hard time like staying consistent. If you have that mental idea in your head and you keep using those choices of words, it will always be like that. You have to make new choices of the way that you speak. So like, this is easy for me. I know how to do this. You know, I'm working at it. But like, I got this, I got this down pat. I'm gonna have this no problem. I've got it figured out. I'm gonna do all the steps that I need to take in order to do that, whether I hire that coach, whether I um, like have that program or have a, a friend that I talk to or whatever it is for you. It's like, you just, you just, you really gotta tell yourself like, I got this, mm -hmm. I, I've got this under control. No more bullshit, I've got this. Yeah, it, it's funny because I use that same attitude towards my mental health where it's like I used to when I was at my lowest points I used to go oh, I'm struggling with this like I'm never gonna get out of it and just convincing myself that I was just broken whereas now yeah. it's like if I have a moment I'm like oh I know what this is I can handle that I know how to deal with it or like I know how to live with it it's not I struggle anymore it's I live with these things uh, that I just I know how to take care of now but once you translate that to like nutrition or like uh, exercise on my own, if there's a, if there's an instructor, I'm fine. But like in working out on my own, it's gone. I just don't have that. But that's, what's cool, Carrie, because you, you know what you need. So give yourself that, give yourself a coach or give yourself a programmer, like whatever that is, somebody there to help you, you know, you need it get the help. Mm -hmm. It's just like mental, your, your, your mental state. Like if you need to talk to a therapist, like go to a therapist, talk to somebody, like it's really important. And they're out there. Like there's people out there who are educated and who are really good at that stuff who can help you achieve your goals. If you're doing the same thing over and over again, it's like, nothing's changing, right? Nothing's changing here. If you truly want it, then you, you get the help. You do whatever you need to do and you just, you get the help. Well, and it's so easily accessible now, right? Because everybody's online. Yeah, everybody. My doctor, 
efforts. Like everybody is online. It's great. I know that you hear that excuse where it's like, well, we're in a pandemic. I can't, I'll do it after we're done. It's like, well, you can do it right now. It's right there. Yep. Yep. And I do it for other things. I'm like, oh, I'll, you know, for organizing my house or something, I'll organize it when I get my new house. You know, I don't, you know, I'm, there's no reason to organize this other house I might as well just wait till I get my new house it could be two years down the road and I'm still telling myself that but you really got to make a decision especially when it comes to like important things like this and like yeah just I keep coming back to the no excuses I don't know if that's like meant to like hit somebody today whoever's listening but like our excuses really hold us back and um you really got to make a choice to take the right action and uh, create whatever it is that you want in your life. I think what a lot of people struggle with too is the um, the what ifs or like the worst case, worrying about the worst case scenario. They, they're worried that if they go out and they do like maybe not so much for working out or no, maybe yeah, for working out. Like it, they're worried about if they go out and they do it, they're not going to like achieve what they want or they're not going to be successful in their workouts Like that whole what if holds a lot of people back. Okay. I love that because it's true. We don't always get exactly what we want. Like if you go and you work out, you're not necessarily going to look like Arnold. I know this is kind of something we just kind of pulled with, but like truthfully, you're not taking steroids and nor do you necessarily want to. So you likely won't look like him. Right. I love that. Yeah, exactly. Good. I'm I'm happy to hear that you don't have to do that. But you are going to achieve your greatest. And I guarantee you, when you get there, you're going to be like, damn, I look good and I feel good. Like, and that's what's going to matter. You know, like maybe that like idea of seeing him has really inspired you, but like you're awesome for you and who you are and what you're about. And so you're going to find that greatness when you're, when you're taking care of yourself and when you're like aiming for that, because you sitting on the couch is not achieving your goals. It's not getting you to what you wanted, what you want to be. So of course you're going to be down. Of course your, your, your mind is not going to be happy and your body's not going to be happy. And like, yeah, you're just like, you're going to have low energy and brain fog and all those things that we talked about today. But like, if you take the action steps to start working towards that, you're going to be feeling really good. And, and, um, you were talking about, yeah, maybe not succeeding, but like, yeah, it's just like you're not going to succeed if you don't try. It's true. Yeah. Wouldn't you? Yeah. W- wouldn't you rather go? Oh, I gave it a shot. Totally. I, there's so many things that I did not succeed in. There's so many things that I've tried, and I did, exactly, and I didn't succeed. So you know what? You let that go, but you keep going with something else, or you know, you just, you just, you just don't give up. You know. Mm-hmm. Sometimes you get ton- like it, it's important to look back and go that didn't work out, but I'm glad I did it. Cause a lot of us get tunnel vision sometimes with our goals. We don't worry about like where we were to start. We're worried about where we're going and not paying attention to, you know, the little baby steps at the little milestones along the way. It, it kind of ruins the whole, the fun of the journey, mm-hmm. which I think a lot of people need to start doing. And I'm kind of talking to myself here, uh, but like, you need to like, sometimes you just need to stop and like, look at where you are now. And I, I relate this back to this podcast or like the, the platform I've made because I love where I am and I love, I love what I do. And the goal is, you know, to get to a point where I can do this full time. Like I can advocate, advocate, and I can talk to people who like I'm inspired by and like just share not even my wisdom, but like the wisdom of others Mm -hmm. to people who might not have it because growing up, I never had any of this. Mm -hmm. Um, But in having that goal, I often forget to stop and look because I got it. And I I didn't realize I did this until I got a call last week from a guy I hadn't talked to in like four or five years. And he was like, Hey man, I just want to congratulate you. Like you're, you're doing really well with the thing, like the channel, like a thousand followers on Instagram in less than a year is really cool, man. And I I was like, yeah, I haven't even, he's like, how do you feel? And I was like, I haven't even thought of it. Like for a day I was like, yeah, woo. And then it was like, okay, back to work. Mm -hmm. And I'm starting to see that, that it takes the fun out of it. Yeah. 
when you need to like celebrate and be excited about the wins. Is that yeah. 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 Just like the little ones. Like it doesn't, you don't have to have a full blown party for breaking a thousand, but you can have a couple of days where you're like, yeah, I did that shit. Yeah. And I'm sure a lot of those people are really in tuned and like are listening and paying attention. So that's, it's yeah. Very exciting. And you should be proud of that. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I struggle with that. A lot. I know a lot of people do. Um, I struggle with that a lot, the tunnel vision. And I think that's a big reason why, like, let's say working out or eating well, like I get so discouraged so easily because I have that goal and I'm not paying attention to like where I started versus where I am now. I'm paying attention to where I started versus where I'm, I want to be. And I only have those two in, in place. Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. And I think that comes back to like having conversations with people like coach or friend or whatever. And it's like, they're going to, they're going to share that with you. And, or if they don't ask them, you know, maybe I had my cousin recently, um, she's doing some, some work on mindset and stuff. And, uh, she asked me to write her a letter and the letter had to say like the reasons why she loves me or like what she, what I, um give to her what i how i make her feel like give give her some positive feedback kind of thing so that if she's having a bad day that she's got that to go to and to read and i just thought it was so amazing because it made me really think about like how much i value her how fabulous she is and i'm like man if i was having a bad day i would want to read this so she has you know this 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 basket or whatever of letters that she can go and read. And so like when she's not paying attention to her wins, she can read what other people are recognizing and noticing. So yeah, I think that's cool. I think it, I think it really is important to, um, to pay attention to those little things. Mm -hmm. Well, and then it helps you propel further, right? Because then you're not setting yourself back. You're like, oh, I'm nowhere near where I need to be. Yeah. Instead, you're looking at it like, look how far I've gotten. Yeah, absolutely. I see that with a lot of my, I used to work with neurological clients. So clients who um, had like spinal cord injuries or um, different things that have stroke or whatever have stopped them from being able to walk properly or move their limbs properly. And so always knowing what they were working towards or like seeing the, the, the goal and achieved is something was really important. So like if they could do something, writing it down, being like, oh my gosh, on this date, you tried it, couldn't do it. And now this is the date and look at, you can do it. And it was such a reward for them to be able to see that they have achieved something. Otherwise it's like that day would have went by and they wouldn't have even recognized it. And we like, we get excited. I'm like, oh my God, I'm so excited for you. This is amazing. You know, and you give that feedback. And it's like, you almost need to do that for yourself. Like, holy crap, I just did 20 push ups. Wow, I feel good. You know, and like writing it down, it's almost like you need to do that to like remind yourself at like where you were and where you've come to. Yeah, you got to be your own hype, man. Yeah, yeah, totally. I, I remember, uh, on the swim team because we used to do uh oh uh, what's the word physic body testing physical testing yep yep yeah and it was like push-ups chin-ups jumps over ropes and whatever but my 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 true love was push-ups and i that was like the one thing i could do because i've got short arms and a big chest so getting to the ground is so easy it's like bench and push-ups i'm like i'm good um and i got to a hundred in a row and I remember when I started the year, I could barely get 50. And so everyone was like, wow, good job. And, and this was in like December, January or something. And everyone's like, that's awesome. And I was like, oh, I didn't get the record. And I just bashed on myself because I didn't get the record that was 130, which I probably, if I had worked a little more, could have gotten if I tr kept, if I was like, wow, I went from 50 to 100 as opposed to I didn't get 130. Uh... You're hard on yourself, boy. I am very hard on myself. I get that a lot. Yeah. Okay. I'm my own. I'm my own. I'm my biggest hype man. Like I'm my biggest hype man, but I'm also my biggest letdown. If right. maybe I worded that wrong, but you get what I mean. Yeah, I get what you mean. You know what? You need to try those push-ups again. But be proud of yourself. You should do it. 
the push-ups. Uh, <laughs> how many you could do now, and then uh, and then you kind of work up towards that goal. I I did um because I was trying I I. I I was What's gonna say that? Arnold can do push-ups. I don't know how many, but <laughs> oh, yeah, no, I'll try to get to that. Um, I, I did them for a couple weeks because I I I was sitting there and I was like, I want to see if I still, you know, I still got it because I was talking to someone on the team. I think I got to like sixty, but um, so it's not a hundred, but it's not terrible. That's amazing, sixty. Well, I mean, I don't want to brag, but no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you see that no i whatever um <laughs> that's right and then <clears throat> excuse me and then on the on the topic of being a hype man where do you where do, where does one start in terms of like self-love like how to love yourself and your body because i know I'm just going to keep saying me because every question I'm asking you is kind of to me <laughs> and to other people yeah, yeah. Who, who hopefully relate. Um, but another big thing that holds me back is the mirror. Like the I'll, mirror. yeah, like the mirror is my worst enemy because, and you know, my ex-girlfriends are probably going to hear this and they're going to be like, yeah, that's true because there will be a mirror in the room and I'll just look at it for like 10 minutes and I'll be like, I'm so gross. Like, and I'm not like, I know I'm not. It's just one of those things that like, I can't, I can't look in a mirror or I can't even think about myself because I don't like myself that way. I don't know how to word it because I do like myself. I do. I love myself, but there's always that part where like, I'll try to start exercising or try to start a diet and I'll be like, Oh, you're too far gone. Mm. You know what I mean? This is funny you're asking this because I actually saw this on Instagram today and I thought to myself, like, huh, what do I do when I look in the mirror? Like, I've never really thought about that before, um, the question before. But honestly, like, it, it's a tricky one. I think I think that you you do need to work on your mindset and the way that you do view yourself because we're all beautiful in some kind of way. I also think that you deep down know that you're not working towards who you want to be. Mm. And so that can play a big part on it. Cause you feel like a disappointment. Like I'm not doing enough, you know, like to get to who I want to be. And so then you're mad at yourself almost is in my opinion of how I would feel. I'd be like, Oh, like I just like, I should have, I should do better. I can do this better. Um, and, but you know what? It just takes time. Like it takes time, but work, like you've actually got to do the work. Mm -hmm. and, and, and again, I truly think that all the things that we talked about today play into that, because if you do not have the sleep and the health and the mindset, or I should say the sleep and all of that, it plays into your mindset, right? then you have the low energy, you have the low energy, your mood is down. Like you just like, it's, it's, it plays these tricks on our mind. Um, chemical imbalances, all of that stuff goes into play when you don't do all these other pieces. So like, I, have you heard of mirror work? Like actually looking into a mirror and saying, I am beautiful. I am amazing. I am smart. I am cool. I am brilliant. I am successful. Like actually staring at a mirror and telling yourself that, have you ever heard of it? I've heard of it. And let me tell you why I don't do it. Uh, because I laugh when I do it. Because I feel I, okay. I personally, I don't think it's ridiculous. I think it's a, a totally legitimate thing. I'm not trashing it. But when I do it, I feel ridiculous. So I have a friend who's the same. She can't do it. She's like, this is not my thing. And so I totally get it. Totally get it. So if that's not your thing, don't do it. Um, anybody else listening out there, try it. Just look in the mirror. And like you, you don't necessarily believe it. You're not going to believe it at first. And you might not for the first like three months, but then one day you're going to be like, damn, I look good. Even if you are not in your best, truest self, you believe it. You start actually thinking it in your mind because you've told yourself so many times that you're amazing, that you look good, that you're wonderful. And you're literally visually looking at yourself. So it's like, it like clicks. It's like, you can actually your mind actually believes what you're telling yourself. So it's not for everybody. So I'm not saying you have to do it, but give it a try if you want to. Um, but for yourself, I don't know. I think like 
I think do the work outside of that then. Like you really got, like tell yourself every day I'm amazing. Don't look in the mirror, but just be like, I'm fucking cool. <laughs> I don't know if we're supposed to swear here, but just be like, I am so awesome. Like I feel good. My boyfriend has the most um, confidence. It's insane. Like he tells, he tells me that all the time. I'm like, you look good. He's like, I don't know. You know, <laughs> he's, like, he's so confident. I'm like, who are you? Like, and so I never used to speak like this ever. I was never like that, but he says it all the time. I'm like, you were so funny. He's like, I know I'm funny. You know, like, he's just like, so right away. Like, yeah, I am. So it's, it's I've actually changed my words the way that I say it. I'm like, you know, I, 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 somebody says like, you're funny. And I'm like, I know, I know, you know, like I take it even, <laughs> you know, it may sound a little conceited, but I'm like, I'm going to own it. I'm going to take that, you know, I'm going to listen to what you just said. And I'm going to take it. And, and it all starts with telling ourselves, you really got to start with telling yourself that like, I am amazing. I am wonderful. And if you can't look into a mirror, just say it, write it down, maybe on paper, but like, just, just continually say it, you know, out loud. That's the best way to react to a compliment. I know. Yeah. 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 I've done that. Um, I mean, every so often I clearly don't do it enough, but people will be like, you're so funny. I'm like, yeah, of course I am. <laughs> like just something like that. And, and then people go, Oh, like, that's not how I thought you were going to react, yeah. but that's way better than going like, thanks. Totally. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Yeah. Um, oh, well, I, I really hope people listen to this because it, it just, for, if you're not like, if you don't listen and you're just kind of stuck in that circle, like the constant loop of like, you know, I'm not amazing or like you're letting yourself down and then that in turn channels to what you're eating and um, and you know, it, it, it channels into what you're eating and how you're working out and everything, but it's so simple because we do that. That's how we get in that circle. We talk and we convince ourselves, but we can flip that. And then do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, it, it's so simple to, to just change your wording. And it has such a big effect on your life in general. Yeah, it really does. And I, and it sounds like wobble bobble like who like witchcraft stuff but it, it really is true like you really just gotta like change your change your words and it's amazing what and how your whole life can change when you just change change your mindset and your words that you use yeah it's just it's so simple yeah it really i wanted is. to uh thank you again michelle for coming on today i really appreciated this i i think low-key no i think i needed it I love it. And, and I mean, I'm so happy to have the conversation and I'm so grateful because it was, it brought up a lot of stuff and memories for me too. So hopefully out there, somebody's listening and it will help them as well. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, where can my viewers find you? Uh, so you can easily find me on Instagram. It's the Michelle Wolf and Wolf is with an E. Um, and you can find me right now currently at movelife.com, M-U-V-E-L-I-F-E.com. But that will be switching over very shortly to the Michelle Wolf.com. Um, but yeah, I'd say Instagram is probably one of the best ways to find me. And then I also have a podcast myself called Move Forward. So it's talking to people all about moving forward from the tough stuff and we get into health and wellness as well but um i've been through a lot of crap and i have a lot of people who come on who who've been through some tough stuff too and uh so we we chat on there and it's again it's called move forward love it and i'll put all those links down below michelle thank you again for coming on i really appreciate it no problem it was a pleasure speaking with you and best of luck with uh with your journey as well oh thank you and to all my viewers i will see you guys next time Hey guys, thanks for watching another episode of my show. If you want more episodes of the H panel, the button's gonna be right here. If you wanna subscribe for more videos from myself, it'll be right down below. Please like, comment, share, give five stars. Let's keep this conversation going, guys, all right? I'll see you next time. Thank you for your support.